Hello and welcome to another episode of the Bionicle Inspiration Series. This episode is episode 60, which is, as was a thing that I was supposed to do every 10 episodes, I was going to be like, haha, a nice part use episode. I totally abandoned that, but uh, now, yeah, maybe I'll keep doing it, I don't really know. But this is the third nice part usage episode, where we're going to cover six marks instead of the traditional three or four. And we're just going to talk about how some people have made some very, very clever part usages using some unique or otherwise useless elements. Uh, so let's get started. But for those of you who are new, welcome to the Bionicle Inspiration series, a series where we cover the mocks of the community to help you get inspired to build something in the future. Or possibly get you out of a mocking block or an artist block, whatever you want to call it. That's what the show's about. So, without further ado, let's begin with the man who I'm sure you knew would be on this episode, Joxon, uh, with his mock, Dr. Kanakog. So, this uses a Galaxy Squad egg part. Now, this Galaxy Squad egg actually comes in different sizes and colors. There's also a trans purple one, uh, or there's this one, which is the pink one. Uh, it also has a really, really cool sort of texture to it because it, it, it kind of has this hexagon, uh, kind of like beehive kind of vibe to it. That's kind of the texture that's on there. And that actually lends itself very nicely to a sort of, well, to a brain design, which obviously this is sort of what that is is mirroring. And that's a really, really cool use uh, for a part like that. And even cooler as well how the color plays very well and very nicely into that. I think that's very, very cool and an awesome part use. Very unique way to create a very unique head design, and of course that is very much complemented by another really good part use, is using the old Gully Mutter claws for eyebrows. Uh, and it's cool that those two parts very much flow together. It really helps to add a lot of personality to that head design, make it look very, uh, very fitting, you know, that kind of big brain coming out of his head, almost sort of alien vibe to a sort of mad doctor kind of guy. Very, very, very great use of pieces to create such personality on a mock. Uh, and to create a very unique head design that you can't really make with any other kind of parts. It's it, it's just not something you see every day. It's very, very cool. And then two final things before we finish up on this Mark 1. Using the CCBS shell there, flipping it on its side and almost having it look like kind of a collar, sort of popped collar like that. That's really, really cool. Very, very clever. Uh, and one little final detail. I love the fact that he's just holding one of those little sort of vials with some, you know, chemicals inside there. Very nice addition, just adding in some minifigure accessories that, you know, Mock can hold or, or has on them, on the, you know, like as a belt or a shoe, I don't know, something like that, is such a great way to add even more personality to a Mock. And Jackson really is the master of uh, adding, uh, adding personality to a Mock. Uh, so little additions like that is always something very nice. So break out the minifigure uh, accessories and see what you can do. So, Fantastic Monk by Joxon, let's move on to the next one, which is by Leonard Arn. I believe he's also known as the Chosen One. You are the Chosen One! And his mark is called Vamar Habis. So, what I love about this, there's actually, there's actually, again, a lot of really cool part usages on this. The first one is the fact that he has placed one of the old CCBS Chima heads. Can't remember specifically which Chima set this came from, but here's a picture of the set. Uh, for those of you who don't know or didn't realize, yeah, uh, there was actually CCBS Chima uh, sets at one point. Sadly, however, correct me if I'm wrong, they were only released in Europe. I think is the uh, is the the news on that. Some of them were released in other places, but I think the second wave was very selective for whatever reason. I don't understand what that was. Um, so definitely, if you're like, man, I wish we could get some CCBS stuff, maybe go on Bricklink and pick up some of those, because that could uh, introduce you to some new and exciting parts that didn't really come out anywhere else. Uh, or some really cool heads, like like this one. So he's flipped this head here, and then put a Matoro Anika mask, quote-unquote. I mean, they were masks, but they were weird. Um, and, and created this really uniquely shaped head. And the sort of, you know, teeth on that, almost sort of saber-toothed tiger kind of uh, head thing there, creates a, a jaw and everything. These parts just look like they're born for each other, and I think that's really cool. And it's kind of a bit of a lesson that I want to want to kind of touch upon with this episode is is doing that, just playing with parts and then seeing, you know, hey, that's that's amazing. These two parts look like they flow together perfectly or, or, or just, yeah, like that. They, they flow together perfectly. They work well together. It's almost as if they're born to be together. Um, and really the only way to to know if a part does that or not is to play with it. 
You know, in the past, I've had people message me and they're like, hey, Cassie, what color scheme should I put on my mock? Or do you think I should try this mask? And um, I'm like, hey, dude, I can't answer you. Like, <laughs> I could say, yeah, I reckon it'll look good, but I could be totally wrong. You, you can, the only way to know is to try it. So don't sit there and be all like, hmm, should I make it blue? Should I add this mark, mask or, or whatever? The only way to know is to give it a go, see what it's like. You never know. And, and, and I think it's in that that you get some really innovative, awesome part usages or, or playing things or whatever is, you know, when you're like, I wonder how tea would look. And you put it on, you're like, terrible, in fact. It looks awful. But you know what? Blue would look even better. And then you put blue on and you're like, aha, I was right. The only way you're going to know is to play. If you talk about it, eh, you, you know, you, you never know what, uh, what, what might or might not happen. It's only through doing that you learn. So, you know, see what you can do. Anyway. One other thing that I wanted to touch upon too, I suppose, he's used that cloth piece that came with one of those really obscure Bionicle G2 poly bags. Very cool to see that part being used. Very rarely see that part in a, in a mox. Very nice to see that cloth element used. Uh, also really cool, the whole torso of this is a Galador torso. What? Very, very cool. Very cool to see Galador in a mock. So a lovely little addition and an awesome mock. So great work there, the chosen one. Let's move on to the next box, which is by our good friend Mitch Henry and is called Rhinoceros Beetle Plague Mech Beta. So this uses a Tohunga arm, otherwise known as the Mictoran arms, or the, the old the old Matorans that came with Happy Meal sets. Those were the days. Those were the days. Remember when we got Lego at McDonald's? Ah, I'm sure that's why so much of us have beer bellies now, is because we went to McDonald's when the Matoran were a part of the Happy Meals, and we bought all the Matoran, all the Happy Meals we could. I sure did. But I don't have a beer belly anymore, so there you go. I'm laid off on my McDonald's. And that's because there's no more Lego. The day, man, the day that Lego, like, happens to come back in Happy Meals at McDonald's, oh, those are going to be cheeseburger-filled nights, I tell you. Anyway, very, very cool to see that Tohunga arm there used as a sort of beetle crest horn thing. Very, very fitting, surprisingly. It's awesome. I've always thought that was a very useless part, that Tohunga arm. I, I, I very rarely see people use it, and ironically, if I ever do see people use it, which is very rare, it's always used in very, very creative ways. So, um, awesome stuff there, uh, Mitch. It really, really ran, lends itself to that rhinoceros beetle vibe. It's uh, really the crux of this mock. I think it's awesome. Also really cool to see a mock that is primarily just a sort of CCBS frame, uh, you know, with the, with the bones and the shells on top there. Nothing too, too complex about it, but it's really not a problem. The mock has a lot of personality, the mock looks fantastic, and it's really simple, but that's kind of the point, so awesome. And that is it for Mr. Mitch Henry's mock. Like I said earlier, well, I didn't actually say it earlier, we're covering six mocks, but that's because I'm going through kind of rapid fire just to cover the various nice part usages that we see throughout the mock. So let's move on to a... Uh, mock by Mr. Cup of Fail, and his name is actually Mr. Cup of Fail, I always add Mr. in front of people's names, but this guy's name is actually Mr. Cup of Fail, but I actually think this mock is a Mr. Cup of Success, because it's uh, very, very good, and it is known as Headless Robot Samurai. So what I love about this is, if you look at the torso there, this took me a bit to understand, but I, I was like, what, what part is that? That's such a, I, I don't know what that is. The old Praetorian Guard CCBS Star Wars Ultra Build set that we, you know, are getting these days, that is actually the head of that Praetorian Guard that he has managed to sculpt around and make a, a beautiful torso out of, uh, and has that really cool texture on the front there because of that head. And I think that's a fantastic part use. Really, really creative, very clever, and awesome because... I'm sure everyone could debate it, and I'm sure other people would be like, ah, I disagree with you, but there are so many parts that can be really difficult to use. But then, like I said, some people will look at it and go, you know what, Ben Cussy, I disagree with you, I could use it easily. And then they find an amazing part use, uh, and they put it in a mock with skill and total... I can't think of the words, but they do a damn good job. Uh, and this is definitely an example of that. And I think it's a very creative way to look at nice part usages. Maybe you can't, you know, work it into a head design or whatever. Why not shove it into a larger part of the body and uh, sort of build around it? And then that way you kind of get one or two particular parts of that piece. You know, for example here, you don't see any bit where the actual head is of this. This is just the top part of that. I guess you would call it a helmet on the Praetorian Guard. So why not do that to create a very nice part usage? Sort of mold other things around it and place it in a, in a very unique way so that you're only getting sort of one part of that piece, if that makes sense. Uh, so I think it's a very, very clever way to do things. Another really clever thing is the uh, sort of, because it is called Headless Samurai, very cool to see that sort of uh, 
Sensei Wu style hat there that he's got on. Very, uh, very samurai like, very, very awesome. Looks fantastic. So thank you, Mr. Cup of Fail. Let's move on to the next mock, which is by Explosive to Hunger. My bad. It's not Explosive to Hunger, it's Explosive to Gruta. Uh, now, this mock is called Gluttony, and I think this is a, always a cool thing, and it's ironically something that a lot of Bionicle people have done in the past, and it's always cool to see people do it, is building mocks that represent the seven deadly sins, and of course this represents Gluttony. And I've seen various mocks in the, uh, well, AFOLs rather, in the past make mocks that have been, yeah, representations of the seven deadly sins, and they're such fantastic concepts to make a mock out of. And... It's definitely something that I would recommend, because it's always cool to see people represent them in some fashion. So if you're stuck on something, there's seven ideas right there. Give it a go. Who knows? See what you can come up with. So, three things I love about this one, googly eyes. Nothing better than seeing some googly eyes on a mock. Very, very humorous, very fun. But I really love, on the head design there, adding in the Bionicle G2 Wave 2, uh, the little sort of trap beast things that Umarak had, uh, making that into a mouth design like that. Very nice, very cool design, very nice part use. And speaking of nice part usages, the torso design there uses one of those sort of weird, um, I don't know, I guess you call it like a, it's not really a cone, I don't know, I, I do not know what that part is called. Someone correct me. Uh, but using one of those there as a little belly, because obviously he is gluttonous, eats a lot, so he's a, he's a, little, he's a little bit chubby. Uh, but very cute too, by the way. Look, look at those googly eyes. What a, that is a face that a mother could love, and so could other people. But yeah, very cool to see that part, which actually technically is a Bionicle piece because it came in a Bionicle playset, the old system ones, one of the Mari ones, if I'm correct. Uh, so very cool to see that there. Very nice part used to create a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a horizontally challenged knock. He's, uh, he's got some, he's got some weight problems. And I've, I've said that before in, uh, was it the Body Types episode? Episode 31? I don't remember. I don't remember the numbers of my episodes. I think that's right, though. I don't know. Um... Why not play around with that? You know, people often have, you know, skinny ninja mocks or, you know, sort of bulky, muscular big guys. Why not make a fat guy? You know, very few people do that, but it's an accurate representation of people. Give it a go. Who knows? Anyway, let us move on to the final mock, which is called Sir Baton. It is by our good man, Bioraz. Now, I prefer to call this mock Old Footface, because that beard that he has there, that very, very nice beard, is actually a uh, humongous old foot from the old Ben 10 construction sets. Very interesting wave of, uh, of construction, the old Ben 10 uh, sets. I remember everyone was saying, oh, Barnacle's dead and it's gonna be replaced by Ben 10. That was not true, but there you go. Uh, very, very interesting parts in those Ben 10 sets. Some, uh, some good things to be able to play with there. Of course, we have seen this piece come back in various Hero Factory sets in other colors, like yellow and red and stuff like that. Uh, but ironically, it makes a fantastic beard in brown. Uh, and then you can couple that with uh, some gears to make a little bit of a top hat. Uh, and then even use some older ratchet parts there for an eye. And then even add a minifigure utensil there for a monocle. Fantastic, fantastic use of a microscope there. Very awesome. Uh, and yeah, you've got a really awesome sort of gentleman design. You know, I see a few people who really like to make mocks like that. They're like, ah, I've made a, made a gentleman mock. Like my, my good friend um, Nathan Ingerson. His self mock is uh, that sort of gentleman sort of style of a build with a you know a nice suit and tie, a top hat, even a monocle or something like that. Very very cool aesthetic for a mock and and something that yeah a lot of people seem to to like to lend towards. So yeah, play around with your parts, see if you can come up with some nice part usages, and uh, yeah, see what you can do. But before we finish, before we finish, not quite done just yet. Definitely wanna definitely wanna 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 sort of this is this is kind of the message that I was uh, sort of touching upon throughout this whole episode is the idea of just. Playing around with your parts. You know, I, I've had a few people message me and they're just like, I, I don't know how to build, like, ah, help. Um, and I don't know, the advice that I've been giving a lot recently is is the idea of, I've said this in past uh, videos, not this actually, if I'm correct, maybe, maybe I have. My bad if I'm repeating myself, but it's always good to hear the lesson again. Um, the, the lesson? Am I a teacher? I don't even know. Anyway, but it's the idea of, say you're running water through a dirty hose. All the water's going to come out and it's going to be dirty, gross, and disgusting. And it's probably going to be like that for a while. But eventually, the water's going to come out, it's going to be crystal clear and lovely. And that's essentially the same thing with building anything, whether it's Lego, art, sculpture, music, acting, sport, anything. You're going to start off, and you're going to be awful. You're going to do terrible stuff, you're going to make terrible art, you're going to make mistakes. But that's how you learn. You have to make the terrible stuff to make so much that eventually you can't make any more terrible stuff, and you can only make good stuff. 
And hey, sometimes you're going to make the terrible thing. You're like, oh my God, this is awful, but I'm just going to keep going with it. And then you finish and you're like, oh, that was actually really good. So don't don't judge the process as it's happening. Don't judge what you're building because that could be a very necessary stepping stone to building something fantastic in the future. You know? So make the terrible art. Make the worst thing you've ever built. I challenge you because that'll be a necessary stepping stone to make something good in the future. That's right. Anyway, that is it for the nice part usage episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you would like to suggest any of your mocks, please do so by putting a link in the comments below or checking the social media links that I have in the description uh, below in the video. And also in that uh, description, you can see some links to mocks uh, to, or to all the mocks that you've seen in this episode today. So be sure to check out these builders. They've built some fantastic stuff. Be sure to check out some of the other stuff they've done. Anyway, that's about it. Thank you for watching. Happy building. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye, guys.